Good morning. How are you today? Hi, JD and Michelle. You are early here on time. Friday again. Can you believe it? <laughs> Hi, Janvi again. I hope you're not skipping school. <laughs> It was lovely to meet up last week, so fingers crossed we'll be able to do this every Friday morning. Feels like a really nice way to just end the week with lockdown. I know a lot of you are homeschooling, um, so it's not the easiest thing, and we can't get out and see each other. So, yeah, nice way to finish the week. Um, so, tell me in the chat what is on your needles at the moment. Have you moved on from last week? Are you knitting the same thing? Is it actually in your hands at the moment? Hi, Kenkala. Nice to see you again. Um, I've got something secret on my needles. So I can't actually show you. I want to show you, but I can't. Um, and I was filming it the, this week. So a couple of times this week, I have been filming it. Um, so there will be a tutorial filming a whole thing, um, editing with a tutorial with a whole thing um, over the next, it'll probably be in about a month. So I'm going to knit this. JD Michelle is knitting a hat. Cancala is, ah, I just took the first thing off my needles this morning. Yes. Oh, fabulous. Round of applause. You remember me, Hannah. Yes, I do, Janvi. <laughs> Hi, Kim. Nice to see you here. Thanks for joining live. It's um, it's lovely to have a live chat. I used to do this on Facebook, and there just weren't enough people. Um, they just kind of flit in and out, and that was it. But we can have a nice chat here. Okay, so I think the first thing, something's gone wrong this week. So I was knitting, you will probably remember, the scrunchies last week. And I'm sure I showed you at least the start of these scrunchies. Hi, Jackie. So that's the polka dot one. And that's going to be one, obviously with a diamond ferrule pattern on it um but it was when i was knitting this one and i had to watch every single stitch and notice it's quite a fine yarn this is um rowan felted tweed which i've used for a lot of my um, knits recently it's all of these are rowan felted tweed but a lot of these are plain stitches and if you're a beginner knitter but you want to make some scrunchies go and get that kit <laughs> you'll love it um this I had to watch every single stitch and I was also reading the chart at the same time. So last weekend, I just said to Nick, why are my eyes aching? What's going wrong? And I thought, have I been too tired? Have I not slept properly? Um, is it dark? And suddenly the sun is making my eyes ache. I, I had no idea what was going on. And he said, reading glasses? <laughs> it was that simple. And last time i went to the opticians and i had a full appointment we did decide i needed reading glasses but it wasn't so important it wasn't so necessary that i needed to get them there and then so that's it i need reading glasses so here we are in lockdown and i've got frames in the post to me so i can try them on maybe i should try them on with you next week <laughs> Um, so yeah, I will try them on and see which ones uh, are comfortable, hoping I found them that are similar size to these. Um, and then I can sew these together because the idea of sewing these fine things together to finish the scrunchies, I just can't even contemplate it right now. I'm knitting something with a thicker yarn, an Aran worsted weight yarn, and five and a half millimeter needles at the moment. Um, so, yeah, I can't finish these. I was hoping I could share these finished scrunchies with you, but I can't. So that's that's the hassle that's happened this week. Oh, dear. 
Oh, fantastic. Kinkala has learned how to cast off this week. Yes. That's something that you just don't realise is, hang on a minute, I've got these stitches on my needles. What do I do with them? <laughs> Where do I go from here? So, yeah, it's a whole new thing, isn't it? Um, I hope you found I've got two or three videos that will show you how to do that on the channel. So I hope you found them okay. Um, good. Yes, it's simple. It's simple more than you think. Um, these stitches are live. And if you've been a crocheter and you've only got one live stitch on the needle, it looks easy. But then you've got all of them sitting on the needle. And like me at the moment, I've got 134 stitches on my needle. <laughs> oh dear. So that can be, yeah, that can be a real accomplishment. Congratulations. And now you can keep warm with your scarf. Thank you, Kankala. Yeah, I really love these. So gorgeous. And like I said last week, like, why haven't I got long hair so I could wear them? Oh dear. Oh. Okay, so um, this week's video was what to do when it's hard. And I thought I'd just go into the comments if I can find them. There we go. Knitting is hard. Handmade products and you're using social media Shush. and graphics. There we go. Skip ads and go down to the comments. Okay. So, <laughs> Isabel, funnily enough, said, <laughs> When was the last time you got a dislike? Probably never because this content is a must like. Bless. <laughs> It's funny, um, I get dislikes every day. And when I was starting, coming up for four years ago, um, some of my videos, the light's wrong, you can't see what I'm doing. And another one, I got the title completely wrong by mistake. Someone was asking me a question and I thought I answered it. But then everyone else, else asked the same question and I answered it in the wrong way. Um, so... They were not happy, so I got a lot of dislikes on that video. Oh dear, never mind. You live and learn, don't you? Yeah, following patterns first seems to add stress. Doing basic stitches and having them turn into items without patterns, look at me, I'm doing this, is amazingly, awesomely, wonderfully smiley. Yes, um, Tina said that. And it is, it's such a big thing when you're a beginner knitter to try and follow a pattern as well because not only are you learning to knit you're understanding the yarn the needles holding them in your hand and how you make each stitch but you're trying to understand the terminology of a written pattern too so trying to do both things at once in my mind it just felt that it's it feels that it's something if you're a beginner knitter Learn one thing at once, and obviously you have to learn the knitting first. So learn how to do the knit stitch. And you can do that from a book. So many books have got illustrations that say this is a knit stitch, full stop. And obviously you can learn it on YouTube or in a course or something. Um, you can even learn the knit stitch in a knitting workshop on a um, in a yarn store. So, yeah, learning to read the knitting patterns, it's just that step too far that you can learn once you've finished a couple of things. So that's it. <laughs> Kankala, I did find your videos on casting off. Good. I stopped myself before I ran out of yarn. It's okay when you're crocheting because you've only got that one stitch to hold, haven't you? Yeah. Um, I was thinking about that. I could totally see you in tiny piggy tails with your scrunchies. <laughs> Like Hagrid. <laughs> yeah, you can see that, can't you? <laughs> uh, I won't go through the embarrassing perspective of making pigtails and putting scrunchies in them here. Oh, dear. Uh, yeah. I 
like I told you last week, I used to have so many scrunchies because I had really long hair when I was a teenager and I only really cut it off in my early 20s. Um, and even then it was still relatively long and I've only had it this short. Actually, in the last few years, I found a hairdresser who I like and it's, yeah, we can do it this short. So let's do it this short. And it's actually, it's really... I find it really flattering. I've lost the curls. I've got fewer curls. So if it's shorter, then the curls show more. Um, and just in case anyone's wondering, I've been cutting my hair all the way through lockdown. I've not been to a hairdresser. So I haven't had sneaky um, haircuts. I've been doing it myself in front of the bathroom mirror. <laughs> oh, dear. I don't want you to look at the back. <laughs> oh dear oh here we go Kay says after crocheting for over 40 years I found knitting to be difficult and slow this is a brilliant comment listen everybody and this is kind of my philosophy on life if you can't do something just take your time so a couple of months ago when I decided to learn to knit I practiced knitting for about six weeks my stitches were uneven and looked terrible. It looked like something a child would do. However, I've just finished my first project, a scarf, and I'm glad I took the time to practice. Even though I'm still slow, it feels more natural and the tension and stitches are even. There you go. Anything that you're learning new, it's just about taking the time, isn't it? And I've just got new software to um, edit my videos. And I knew it was going to take me longer for the first few videos. So I just made that time. I let myself take longer. Um, and yeah, it gets frustrating because I had to look stuff up on Google and go, how do you do that? How do you do that? Okay, it's just that little icon I have to click. But it's not obvious. And, let, you know, you don't know until you don't know, until you know. So um it's it is about taking time and any new technique you're learning within knitting is about taking the time and understanding that as you're starting it might feel awkward and it might feel difficult and it might feel complicated so joe hi joe welcome we were just talking about planning from a home homeschool perspective oh crikey uh, that sounds like fun oh dear Finding a hairdresser for curly hair is hard. It is. Um, I know that people don't understand, but if you go to a big salon like I do, it's it's not a massive building, but they've got a lot of hairdressers there. There's one curly hair specialist and one person who thinks he's a curly hair specialist, but he's not. <sighs> oh, dear. Ishbel says, Hi, Hannah. I'm so glad I managed to catch this live stream. Yes, you're here. You and your videos have helped me so much as a beginner knitter. I look forward to your uploads each week. Scotland, yes. My sister's in Edinburgh. So close. Um, Jan V, what is your full name? My middle name is Elizabeth. I'm very proud of that because my grandmother was Elizabeth in the middle. Um, and her sister-in-law, my mum. So this is my dad's mum was Elizabeth in the middle. And my mum is Elizabeth in the middle. So she named my sister and I Elizabeth in the middle as well. So that's exciting. Um, and now my niece is Elizabeth in the middle too. I love that. Um, it just holds us together because my mum knew that at some point we might end up being married and have different surnames. So it's still something that we've got that connects us. Um, hello, Hannah from Barcelona. Hi, Maria. Um, many thanks for so many good, funny, <laughs> funny learning moments. Ah, <laughs> oh, dear. Cancala, right. Practicing really does help that tension. Yes. Finally got the hang of it halfway through the scarf. That's it. Yeah. And you'll treasure that scarf, but then you'll send the, you'll knit the next one. Um the next one you knit, you'll notice that it's completely different. And it just 
gives you that incentive to keep going because you go, oh, look at that. That looks even better. And then you'll stay, start thinking, I'm really good now. So I could even do this and give people this as gifts. So it just, it, it really does fill your heart. Kim, I love learning new stitches patterns. Don't think you ever stop learning. Yeah, exactly. I love exploring and finding out new things. Becky, just started knitting five days ago. Yes, 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 yes. Loving the videos and knitting so far. Yes, welcome. Hi, Becky. Um, oh, well done, Kankala. You've typed my name in. I have been knitting for 16 years, says Bubble Baking. Ah, hi there, Bubble Baking. <laughs> and crochet with one needle is so awkward. <laughs> and strange yes it does kind of feel odd um love your videos only found them last year thank you the interesting thing with crochet and knitting is um that i crocheted better after i'd watched people crocheting um and i used a really simple easy book to learn to crochet it was a ladybird book which literally has I don't know, 20 pages in it. And it's do this and here's the picture. Do this and here's the picture. It's that simple. So if you overcomplicate it because you've learned one thing rather than the other, then it, it does make it too difficult and it really struggles. I, I, yeah, I think I only learned to crochet because I used such a simple book. And um, my mum had crocheted in the past. That was incentive for me because she had a few blankets and a couple of cushion covers and things that she'd made um, when she'd been crocheting. But she basically was just a knitter and didn't do much else. Now, then um, she did a load of patchwork, um, hand-sewn English patchwork. Um, but yeah, didn't do a great deal of crochet. So it was just up to me to, to learn and that was it. So learn from the very simple foundations and you can then add to it. Uh, can color oh i'm sure i'll see a difference yes i knitted instead of pearl four times throughout so it's got a few blemishes that's fine and you'll be so proud of it yeah yeah cara says have fun with it go and follow hooting pirate joe if you want planning support <laughs> Oh dear. Knitting with two is strange to me. Yes, if you're a crocheter, knitting with two needles is going to feel odd because you've got to hold them and the yarn, whereas with crochet, it's just one. Oh dear. Jackie, I'm finding it hard to knit again due to illness, but I'm getting there. Any ideas for quick, easy knits? Lots of ideas for quick, easy knits. This kind of thing, scrunchies. marks I love bookmarks I've just created a mystery bookmark kit and there's a scrunchie kit as well so the mystery bookmark kit the idea is that you get any yarn that you want um that I choose for you rather so you don't know what yarn you're getting until it arrives so that's kind of exciting um but it will be the right weight yarn for the pattern um scrunchies Mug cozies, this kind of thing will sit around your mug. Um, I actually haven't got a mug cozy on, it's just that here. <laughs> coasters, test out different stitch patterns and have fun by knitting coasters. That kind of thing. Um, if you want to do some fingerless mitts, that's the kind of thing. And I have pattern for chunky yarn the um this pattern's actually sold a few times this week so that's on the Ravelry store um and this one is also in my crafty cables um course um small things to knit you can also get a cable this is kind of like a pot holder 
I wouldn't want to hold a pot with it because it's not that thick, but it's ideal for putting a tea teapot on that kind of thing. Um, that is. It might be knit with hannah.co.uk forward slash cables to get the free pattern. I'm going to test that and see if it works. Yes, it is. Knits with hannah.co.uk forward slash cables. That was quick. So that is something quick. It's. Um, I'm going to say, and I can, I'm going to show you something in a minute. One of the absolute essentials as part of my knitting life. I will do this first. That is 15 grams of yarn knitting this. So it's not a big knit. If you're able to do 10 minutes a day, that might take you two or three days. So it will feel easier. Um, just so many little things you can knit um, with half a ball of yarn, a baby beanie. I used to love knitting baby beanies if I just had like an evening to spare and I wanted to spend a few hours knitting, I would knit a baby beanie. Um, like with a, an odd ball of yarn and then a pattern, that's it, ready to go. Um, and yeah, so many things. That kind of scarf, just a few stitches on the needle, you're ready to go. A scarf for a teddy bear. Um, if you knit a square, and fold it in thirds, you've got a glasses case or a smartphone case. So, lots of little things. I could go on for ages. And then, of course, is the what to knit for beginners. <laughs> so, what to knit for beginners. Um, what to Knit for Beginners is in the Beginner Knitters playlist, I'm pretty sure, and I think it's in the Planning Your Knits playlist as well. There you go. Um, so, can colour. Okay, I hold the yarn with my left normally and switch to my right for knitting. I can't do continental knitting, it's so slippery to me. That's exciting, which means that even though it does feel a bit awkward in your left hand, it will feel easier if you ever want to knit with two colours because you can hold one in one hand and one in the other. Um, when I crocheted, I learned to hold the yarn in my left hand and I think that gave me a lot of um, confidence when I wanted to use two colours, which means I hold one yarn in one hand and one yarn in the other hand. And I just carried on knitting like I normally did, but I had the muscle memory in both hands for holding the yarn and it means you can switch between them so yeah if you want to hold your your hand your yarn in your right hand when you're knitting that feels good but if you ever want to use two colors you will just have that little um knowledge on using one hand or the other so it could be a real help um yeah Learning cables is exciting, but need to fill more time, um, a few more basic stitches. This is interesting. You need the knit and the purl and need to be confident knitting in between them. So try out moss stitch, something like that. Try out slipping some stitches. So there's a slip stitch. Um, and what else could you do? Do dishcloths. If you can find a book or just even go to my playlist with lots of different patterns, stitch, stitch patterns in it. Just knit some dishcloths or bookmarks with them. And it will help you switch between the knit and pearl stitches in various ways. And that is what you need for cables. Ribbing is really important. So rib stitches, um, knit one pearl one, knit one pearl one, or switching between knit two pearl two, knit two pearl two. That's what you need in a rib. So you can make headbands, you can make bands for then knitting a hat, all that sort of thing can really, really boost you. And then you'd be feel more ready to do cables than you might do otherwise. It's certainly something you can do um, sooner than you might think as a knitter. Um, you don't have to wait 
three years before you can do cable netting. It can get really complicated, but this is the first step for cable netting and it's quite a simple first step. Don't have to go too far when you're cable knitting. There's um, a cowl and a hat in my knitting kit shop. They are both beginner's methods when you're cabling. And uh, yeah, yeah, don't think you have to wait too long. Janvi says I'm boring. <laughs> Can we do something interesting? Well, I can't really do anything because I haven't got an overhead camera here. So I can't show you how to knit actually in these videos. So until I've got that kind of thing set up and I need a lot more equipment to do that, I can't do anything really interesting here. Um, but I think us chatting is enough to keep us going for the moment. <laughs> Oh dear, Leslie, I'm a new knitter. Yes, knitted a door draft excluder. What a great idea. You used that for years. Yes, a headband, some catnip mice for the cat's refuge, sample squares. Yeah, completed basket weave stitch yesterday. Yes, oh, I love that. I'm using that bookmark actually, it's in the other room. I'm really pleased with the outcome. Yes, yes. Um, Kankala didn't know that two colours could be done with two hands. Yeah. Um, you can hold them in one hand. Um, and I have done that myself because at some points I've had to use three colours instead of two. But I also like the fact that you're allowed to take your time when you're doing two colours. Some of this, I was actually dropping one colour and knitting the other colour because of where it appeared in the row. So it... It really does, it's about the speed you want to do, the far, how fast you want to knit something, etc., etc. Oh, dear. Um, right, I did want to share something with you. This is the pattern making process that I go through because I have had questions about this and kind of conversations about this recently. Um, Joe, I just will read this. Chatting is great. Yes, chatting is great. I cried this morning because I thought I had my niece outside my window, but it wasn't. Then I realised how much I miss my sister-in-law and niece and nephew. Exactly. Yes. I I get that. I rang my sister the other night and she was reading to the children. So I just listened while she was reading bedtime story to the children. And it, it, it at the moment, it feels like where is that connection? Because it doesn't feel quite right. Yeah. Let's be together. Let's be here for each other. I think it's so important at the moment. Okay, on with the show. When I'm making a pattern, this, for example, it can look like, I mean, as a knitter, I sometimes think that about other designers as well. Oh, you've chosen a pattern and you've just stuck it on the needles and that's it that's it that's the design and it's not that difficult because it's a it's a known stitch pattern the butterfly stitch pattern is known it's in books there you go um and i just wanted to yes yes that yarn is so beautiful this is the um rowan felted tweed it's the barbara shade pink i would Im i Kind of imagining that it's Barbara Windsor because she used to wear a lot of pink. Not Barbara Windsor. Barbara Cartland. Because she always wore pink. Yes. Um, so when I was coming up with what I wanted to put in my shop, with all of the um with all of the designs I wanted for the autumn, I just had to play and I had to spend some time playing. So I just got some yarn out and I got some needles out and I played. This is a um, it's a simple moss stitch and it's a really thick yarn. So I was playing with that. This is a, a slip stitch, I think. Yes, a slip stitch, that kind of thing. And I, oh, crikey, that's made the, there you go. Way, the, co the colours are going very odd. You can see that better there. This is a slip stitch and you can see the difference if I hold up that side instead. 
There you go. So it was just a case of playing. And I did loads more of the stuff as well. And I actually, I can't find it at the moment, but I did really thick white um, yarn with the butterfly stitch. And I realised how effective it was. So then I tried it with the felted tweed. This is what this is, the felted tweed. Um, this is wool viscose from um, wood pulp and alpaca so it's a lovely mix um and i tried it with this tweed and it obviously it wasn't so big it didn't stand out so much but with the color right then it works really well it looks really really lovely on gray as well so it then i had to sit there and go well i'd really like to do it with that i the the number of little samples i tried with the different colors of felted tweed my God. <laughs> you wouldn't believe it. Um, and I had to work out how many stitches I wanted between the, the butterflies as well. Whether they're going to go right next to each other or whether they're going to be apart. Then it's what size cow do I want? Do, how do I stop it from rolling at the top and rolling at the bottom? Does it need garter stitch or does it need ribbing at the top and ribbing at the bottom? So lots of different things I had to try out. It wasn't just a case of how many stitches do I need on the needle? Let's just do that pattern and go for it. So there's a big process. If you're thinking that, um, oh, anyone can make a knitting pattern, any can make a knitting pattern, just be prepared to take that. No. My phone was ringing. I wasn't expecting that. My phone never rings. <laughs> Okay, right. Stop laughing, Hannah. Anyone can make a knitting pattern, but just be prepared to take that time. <laughs> Anyone can make a knitting pattern, but yes, it does take the time. And it is so worth experimenting with the different colours and the different patterns and the different stitch because then you get to a point where it feels easier when you want to do the next ones because it feels so right. It's, um, it works. It feels better um, when you're doing more and more, when you're making more and more. And you can also take the ideas that you come across with one. Like how many ideas did I come up with that cow that I could then use in different um, patterns as well? That's the big thing too. For example, I knew if I had a similar stitch um, style, but I use fewer stitches and I w I've not done much on the way of circular needles for much smaller, but I've realized when I've been practicing, when I've been trialing stuff for the cow, that I could do fewer stitches and um, keep it on the circular needle for the mitts as well. So it, it does give you that um, extra knowledge that you take into the next patterns. Um, let me answer a few questions. What kind of fibre? Oh, that's the um, felted tree. Yes, that's the wool viscose from wood pulp and alpaca. Bubble baking bunny. My family is 409 miles away. The UK never felt so big. Yes. I moved just before lockdown last winter. And never knew. We have got this. Yes, we have got this. So, so true. And um, it's some, something I was remembering when lockdown started in March. My grandparents, I'm sure some of your grandparents as well, went through the first war. They lived through bits in various cities across the country. I mean, the Blitz is London, but various cities in the country were like that and people were went off to work and didn't know whether the house would still be standing when they came home we're in a different position it's a completely different position but in so many ways we're actually in a best, better position because so much of the world is actually on the same side we have the same enemy in a way so it it feels very different so if, if they can get through the second world war and so many other atrocities that have happened since then we can get through this 
and it's just a time yeah you know um the moth stitch is lovely yes cool so yes just it does feel nice just um practice and all that sort of thing the mustard color is lovely i love mustard there's something about it ah, lovely and um with my gray hair now i'm finding i can wear yellow more easily so i'm really happy um <laughs> probably a wrong number yeah i've got no idea who that was um hi red red wine good morning from canada you are up early it's half past five in the morning well done half past six half past six um okay Cala's in america oh good gracious i didn't realize <laughs> yes janvi's just finished her mug cozy great job what do you want to knit next have you any ideas yes lots of ideas um re-watch this and i just gave you a load of ideas earlier so headband do you want to do something for your hair like a scrunchie do you want to knit more mug cozies so the rest of the family's got them as well bookmarks i love bookmarks um coasters so you've got something to put your mug on that sort of thing um yes lots of ideas do you have any tips for blocking hats um wear them that's the best way to block a hat is to wear it that sounds really strange but <laughs> yes yeah you're allowed to yes knit a headband definitely um it's blocking hats you can knit the pieces before you sew it together so if it's a if it's um see it's the difficult thing it depends on what shape hat you've got if it's like a beret then it should be quite easy to block it into a big circle and allow the middle of it to not be quite blocked because that will that will stretch around the head and it will be the top flat bit that you want to be the right shape so definitely you can block that um I'm not sure it's a good idea to block other hats because otherwise you'll end up with the flat shape with the um, with folds, kind of a pleat in it. But definitely wear it. That's one of the best ways to get a hat to be the right shape. Yeah. I love your natural colour hair. Thank you. Um, it's really interesting, actually, watching my older videos back, how my grey hair is more noticeable now, and I thought it was noticeable then. I I love it. Jan V, I want to knit a headband. What, so let me start. What colour? I'm going to use pink. That's my favourite colour. Go for it. Pink headband. Perfect. Joe, oh, is it on to watch later? Yes. Great, because I've watched loads. Um, six children here doing different lessons or play activities. Yes, this is always on for replay. If I do a live, it can be replayed. There you go. Um, love knitted headbands. I wear them in the house. Cozy in Mossich is just perfect. Yes, it is. Perfect. Um, I actually have got a knitted headband here somewhere. It can be that. It can be a lot more complicated depending on what you're after. There you go. Um, Cancala asked me earlier on, do I wear... Um, a lot of my items are specifically for patterns, so they're very much like. Um, a lot of them will end up... Um, if I've knitted more than one, and over and over and again, like a lot of my older items that I've knitted, now that they are, the patterns are kind of not as relevant now as they were, say, three, four years ago. They've been presents. I've donated them to charity shops, that kind of thing. Um, but yes, quite a lot of what I knit now, I will be wearing 
and quite a lot of what I knit for patterns will be used for photographs over the next few years again and again and again. So um, I'm not leaving the house very much at the moment. So knitting a cow, while it's nice, it's not that useful. <laughs> oh dear. Um... Joe, I've never blocked anything in my life, but I started a corner to corner blanket, so probably will have to block that. Possibly, possibly not. The thing with blankets is that I find folding them is a really good way to just let it rest and let it be calm. You kind of go, okay, give it a few weeks, nicely fold with no one messing around with it, and it will actually sort itself out. Um, that's what I found with my cotton baby blankets in the past. Um, I'd rather not block them because you need a lot of blocking. And especially with a cotton, it can be really heavy and it can really hold the water quite densely for a long time. There you go. Um, can color. I'll do a headband once I do my winter hat. I have to learn circular knitting first because that's on my to do list. You can knit stuff if you. If you're used to crochet, you may be used to seams. I seam so much. I do most of my hat patterns are seamed. Joe, I've only been to Tesco since all this started. Having to go with my son for his operation felt like a day out. Yeah, I should think it did. Goodness me. Can I please wear my head knitted headband? I'm not gonna do that. Um Oh yes, the other thing I wanted to share with you was one item that I've been using a lot and this is really, really useful when I'm creating patterns. Can you see what that is? Can you see what that is? Can you guess what that is? It's digital scales. I use it so much at the moment because I'm knitting blankets. It's... Um, a case of constantly checking out how much yarn is left and what's coming up. And it's um, really interesting because I, I realise how how much yarn I get through, et cetera, et cetera, for each thing. So definitely if you want to do more with knitting and you want to move on and start creating your own patterns, this is really going to be helpful. Yeah, a digital scales. And I keep nicking it from the kitchen, so at some point we're gonna need it more than once. So this is um this is digital scales from the kitchen, Joe. See that? Ta and I actually would like one that's more accurate. So more like one that you'd use to um where you post so you can actually get the real like half a gram and that kind of thing. Yes, I know Sanskrit is around Janvi Namaste. That's isn't that part of Sanskrit? Um can cut you sound like your lockdowns are more strict than over here. Yes, in some ways I wish they were stricter. Um we are allowed see it's not what we're allowed. I I wish people would look at um what we're not allowed. So it's difficult. Yeah. Yeah, I, we have got, we haven't got any curfews in place in the UK, but it's about not meeting people. That's what it is. It's not meeting people. So if you don't want to meet people, you don't leave the house. You're only allowed to leave the house if you need to go to work or if you go to school and at the moment most schools are closed to most students um if you're a key worker then you're allowed to turn your children to school but um yeah it is strict in the uk and we've needed to have that so the numbers will go down we don't want the numbers to plateau without going down we need them to go down um
Red, red wine. I use stash and different knitting pattern in one shawl for my lockdown. Oh, that's a nice idea. You've, you're going to have a lockdown shawl and you'll remember it. That's lovely. Yeah. Oh, Kim says grey hair is becoming fashionable, apparently. I've noticed more grey hair coming through lately myself. It's interesting because I grew up and my mum never dyed her hair. My grandma, she'd come round and we'd say, what colour hair is she going to have today? Because <laughs> she used to have a permanent set and a green rinse or a purple rinse or something, so it was funny. <laughs> but it never uh, occurred to me to dye my hair. So it's just natural. But yeah, we are eating organic. We are buying local. It is part of not polluting the environment if you don't. Um, okay, bye, Jan V. You've got Sanskrit class. Um, if you don't want to pollute the environment, if you don't want to um, increase the prop problem with pollution, etc., um, yes, okay, you can use eco dyes, but. Um, from my stand, why use them in the first place? Do I love natural? Um, yeah, it's difficult, Joe. No matter how strict it is, people who don't care still won't care and will risk others' health. Yeah, but yeah, it's difficult. Um, it, yeah, it's interesting, Kankala, because you've got, so, you've got a larger population than us. Um, you've got, what, 335 million in the US. We've got about 67 million in the UK. And if you kind of connect those numbers, the percentages aren't that different, I'm afraid to say. They are different, but they're not that different, but... Yeah, it's, it's so sad to see what's happening in different places in the US because it's become politicised, hasn't it, with the um, with the masks, etc. But we're not going to talk politics. Yes, I'm going to eat more natural because I put on some quarantine pounds. <laughs> yeah. Oh, dear. Growing old disgracefully, says Joe. <laughs> we're allowed to do that yes i'm trying to eat more quarant more naturally because i put on quarantine pounds so many people have so many people have it's weird because um because of my health conditions i can't drink alcohol so i haven't put on a great deal i don't think i've put on anything actually it's just been a very kind of a stable time for me in the last year but um i know alcohol has, has had it too Oh dear. Grey hair means wisdom. Yes, it does. It's it's the lockdown punch. Pudge. Lockdown pudge. Um so yes. I uh we're not we're not talking much about knitting anymore, are we? So is there any other knitting quest are there any knitting questions you have for me that I can answer here? Um don't drink alcohol but love milkshakes. <laughs> it's about treating yourself this year. And not letting it get you down. Yeah. Um, I think that's... It has been important. We're allowed to do... We're allowed to do that kind of thing. Yeah. Very much. Um, if you have any knitting questions, then um, stick them in the comments. What I would like to do is invite you to the Beginner's Workshop tomorrow. If you're a beginner, that is knitwithhannah.co.uk. forward slash beg workshop there you go um that's we'll get you signed up it will organize everything you need to join me tomorrow afternoon 3 15 tomorrow afternoon uk time we're going to start doing that um is knitting cotton as restricting as it is in crochet? Um, it depends on what kind of cotton you're, knit you're knitting with because in crochet, I know it's mercerized cotton a lot of the time, which can feel tighter. I 
make sure I'm using a cotton that's got a good ply to it, so it's got a really good twist to it. Then it's got that give. But yes, yeah, sometimes um, cotton can feel tight. It can also be kind of tricky to knit with because you might put your needle through the thread rather than around the thread because cotton, with the lack of little fibres, it won't hold it to get itself together. Yeah, cotton can hurt your fingers, I agree. Um, Becky, as a complete beginner, what would you aim to make first after practising a few stitches? So, like I said, but Mark, Mark Cozy headband, anything you want with the knit stitch. Um, go and watch that What to Knit for Beginners um, 10 First Ideas video. Um, then you can move on to knitting a scarf once you've practised a little bit. Coasters are brilliant. Just knit a few coasters. But I've got the beginner's knitting kit, um, quite a few beginner's knitting kits in the shop now. So if you want to go and have a look at them, that's the first great first place to start. Um, we've got big long scarves if you ever want something like that. That's a classic beginner's first knit. Once you've practiced a bit, you've got your, you've got your stitches understood and you know what you're doing, then you can move on and start knitting that kind of thing. So, yeah, that's... It's a, it is a classic knit for a beginner. But I wouldn't say it's your first thing you knit. You've got to practice your stitches first. Ishbel, do you have any tips or existing videos on stitching up hats that are knitted flat? So I have so many, I have knitted so many in the round, but I'm not yet comfortable with stitching up my flat ones. I have some seaming videos. It is finishing your knits playlist. So if you go to my channel, then go to playlists, you'll find finishing your knits playlist. Um, that has got a few seeming videos in it. Otherwise, you want to go to my courses. I've got a hat knitting boot camp. Every single one of those is knitted flat. And every single step of that is put in a tutorial video. So it's, I've lost count of how many videos are in that. Academy.knitwithhannah.co.uk Hat knitting boot camp. That is knitting hats flat. And they've all got... Um, finishing videos, so doing the seam with, for diff in different ways, um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So there are a couple of videos, but I don't think there is a stocking stitch um, seam video on YouTube. So um, tips for stitching up hats. You want to use a mattress stitch. Or you can use the, a simple slip stitch on the inside. There you go. Joe, do you have any tips on carrying different coloured yarns up the side of your work? I always think it looks messy. You must have some magic tip. I have how to knit stripes video right here on YouTube. Ta-da! So go and find that. You can actually search um, in the channel. If you go to channel and videos, there's a little mic um, microscope symbol. And it might even be on the home page in my channel. There's a little... Um, search um, thing if you're on the desktop it's definitely there how to knit stripes you could stick that in the youtube search how to knit stripes knit with hannah it'll be there um crochet cotton is lovely for coasters i agree red red wine definitely and it's so easy to wash yeah for a small item like that it's brilliant bubble baking bunny would you recommend using smaller needles to cast on to avoid saggy edges no, because you you actually your cast on might be too tight. Um, I would recommend trying out different cast on methods. There's a whole there's four videos, really really old videos that you'll love. Um, there might even be five videos in my cast on, and just check them out. I use the cable cast on, that leaves it without saggy edges. If you're using the knitted cast on, you could well have saggy edges. So just be careful about which cast on you're using. The knitted cast on can leave very saggy edges. It looks just, it can look really odd. You've got to get the tension right. I tried to knit with cotton the other day and my swatch looked terrible. Cotton isn't very forgiving at all. It hasn't got the stretch and the bounce that other yarns have got because it's just not part of the fibres qualities. It just doesn't do that. Um... So yeah, hi Amaris, nice to have you here. 
You're welcome, Becky. <laughs> Joe says her husband is grounded until he buys the tassel scarf from the shop. <laughs> yeah, that's the way to get it, isn't it? Oh, uh, dear. Yeah, grounding husband is a good idea. <laughs> Get more yarn, yes. Thank you, Kenkala. The ta the tassel scarf. If as you're not in the UK, I can't send you the kit, but you can definitely get the um the wool. Is something that's available around the world because it's um Rowan, and the digital pattern is there on the shop as well, so you can get that. Is it good to do a slip stitch at the beginning of your knitting? I do. I do. The thing with slip stitches is, is it will depend on the cast on method. For long tail cast on, you don't necessarily need a slip stitch. That's a maybe you do, maybe you don't. Kankala, how would you say I should go about knitting cotton since I'm having trouble? I'd I didn't I'd knit without cotton. I wouldn't knit with cotton for a while. And then bring yourself back to using cotton later. And when I'm knitting with cotton, I do tend to use a larger needle. So, for example, if I'm using cotton um, DK or what do you call it in America? <laughs> um, it's not medium, it's fine, possibly. You've got numbers in America and I get really confused with those numbers. I'm sorry. Um, but we call it double knitting here. I use four millimeter needles instead of 3.25. If I'm knitting with iron weight cotton, I use 5.5 instead of five. So yes, just gives you that extra um, kind of give. Let's call it that. It does give you an extra give because the cotton hasn't got that stretch to itself. Yeah, using the long tail cast on. Okay, was it you? No, it was Bubble Baking who was asking about saggy edges. Use the long tail cast on, it's the only one I know so far. Okay, um, I definitely use, try the cable cast on method. I find that it's better and you haven't got to sit there and guess how much yarn you need. Yeah. I definitely try the cable cast on. That is my favourite cast on method. And that again is one of my very early, very, very early um, uh, videos. So, because it is my favourite cable, uh, favourite cast on method, and I use it for pretty much everything. Oh, great. You're using a European term so you can understand. Yes. <laughs> that should be a meme, Joe. Definitely. My knitting is okay, but I got saggy edges. But only knitters would know that. And possibly only knitters who've been on this call would understand it. <laughs> oh dear. Right. I've just got a notification from someone on Google um, who's asking me a question. What's my favourite knitting stitch? I love garter stitch. I got a notification that someone's put a comment on one of my videos. What's my favourite knitting stitch? I love garter stitch. There's something about the knit stitch. It's so classic. It's so foundational. It is just... It's, it's just absolutely lovely. And it means that it it's applicable to every single knitter in the world. Every single knitter can use garter stitch every single knitter whether you've just started or you've been knitting for a hundred years you never know i plan to be knitting for a hundred years there you go garter stitch that's another point good point joe netflix and the knit stitch you can do so much while you're knitting the knit stitch but that's not why i choose it it's because it's just a joy to see i love it i love looking at i love looking at garter stitch Brilliant, your moss stitch, fabulous. Anyone else? Anyone else 
got any what would you like what's your favorite knitting stitch i mean we're talking about a stitch pattern rather than a knitting stitch if we knit if we use pearl stitches everywhere then it would also look like garter stitch but what's your favorite stitch pattern like a game show host what's your favorite stitch pattern what's your favorite stitch pattern what's your favorite stitch pattern um oh, disney plus and knit <laughs> Do you have children? Can Calla by any chance? Or are you just a grown up who loves um who loves Disney Plus? My my brother, let's face it, is a Disney Plus watcher. He he can't get enough of the Marvel films. Nice to follow you for the first time in a live chat. Thank you for being here, Maria. Trying to learn knitting and improve my English. Fabulous. Oh good. Yes, we've been here for an hour, so I've got to go as well. <laughs> I have to go to work. <laughs> Um, I will see you on Tuesday. Joe, I love bubble stitch. It looks lovely, but it's a pain. Yes. I've got bubbles in some patterns coming up, but don't worry. They won't annoy you so much. They are few and far between, but they are just perfect. I love a stitch I did on my scarf. It was knit one pearl one stitch and it's so bouncy. Yeah, that's um, ribbing. Marvel. <laughs> Linen stitch. Yes, linen stitch. Yeah, it's just you. You just love Disney. Having said that, I watched Beauty and the Beast last week because it was on television and it was available to watch for eleven days, I think. And I thought I'm going to watch it. Emma Watson doing the Beauty and the Beast, sing along with it. We had a VHS video, um, Beauty and the Beast sing along when I was a child. I think it must have been driving my mum mad because it was Disney and then there was a bit of Fantasia and then it was all that kind of stuff. But sorry, it was Beauty and the Beast, but it was mostly Beauty and the Beast with other Disney songs in between as well. But And we'd watch the whole film too. So. But the Independent Woman. <sighs> yes. Okay. Thank you so much for joining me today. It's been lovely chatting and talking about knitting. Do bring your questions along next week as well. And in two weeks' time, I'll be live in the membership. So you can come along and actually show me your knitting because you can come on video with me. If you want to share, if you've got any questions that you want to share with me where you need to show me your live knitting, then that's um, the place to be. Peter Pan made me fall in love with London as a child. Yeah. I mean, I did go to London quite a lot as a child because we're only 60 minutes away from it on the train. But... That kind of film, yes, it does make you fall in love with London. Peter Pan, 101 Dalmatians. Oh, dear. Right. Thank you for being here. I will see you Tuesday um, with the usual video. It is very, very centred on very beginner knitters this week. So if you are a knitter who's past that stage, then just keep watching. I'll be here for more videos. Don't abandon me just because of this week's video. <laughs> Um, have a great week. See you soon. Happy knitting. Oh, I can't my mouse to end stream. There we go. Bye. Happy knitting. <laughs>